Hello, welcome to the weekly highlights program on Azerbaijan television with the major developments of the week. I am your host, Ilham Ahmadov. Now first, let's take a brief look at some of the top stories of this week. President Ilham Aliyev received OSC Chair in Office, Minister for Foreign and European Affairs and Trade of Malta, in work. On May 17, President of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, visited Fizuli and Shusha. President Ilham Ali received Patricia Scotland, Secretary General of the Commonwealth. Patricia Scotland expressed satisfaction with her visit to Azerbaijan, emphasizing the significance of her trip coinciding with the anniversary of the birth of Heydar Aliyev, the national leader of the Azerbaijani people. Patricia Scotland said that she had visited the graves of the national leader Enzer Aliyeva, the outstanding ophthalmology scientist and academician, highlighting their contributions to the development of Azerbaijan. Patricia Scotland praised Azerbaijan's successful chairmanship of the Nanalayan movement, especially underscoring its significance during the COVID-19 pandemic. She mentioned her participation in the summit of the movement in Uganda, noting that Azerbaijan's chairmanship was highly valued by all member states and yielded practical outcomes. Patricia Scotland once again congratulated President Ilham Aliyev on Azerbaijan's successful chairmanship of the movement. President Ilham Aliyev expressed gratitude for the kind words and hoped that Patricia Scotland would leave the country with the positive impressions. The head of state highlighted Azerbaijan's commitment to effective activities within the framework of its chairmanship of the Nanalayan movement, emphasizing important steps taken towards the institutional development of the movement. President Ilham Aliyev recalled Azerbaijan's initiative during the pandemic to convene a special session of the UN General Assembly in response to COVID-19, noting the country's assistance to more than 80 countries, especially member states of the Nanalayan movement. The president noted that Azerbaijan ensured the adoption of relevant resolutions in UN institutions against vaccine nationalism, emphasizing Azerbaijan's efforts to unite international efforts in the fight against it. President Ilham Aliyev underlined that Azerbaijan's three-year chairmanship of the Nanalayan movement was extended for another year with the support of the member states. President Ilham Aliyev stated that Azerbaijan would apply the international experience gained during the country's presidency of the movement with respect to climate change and continue its efforts in this regard. He also pledged fair treatment to nations affected by climate change. President Ilham Aliyev highlighted the unanimous support received from the international community with regard to Azerbaijan's presidency in hosting of COP29. He mentioned Azerbaijan's being in the track of chairs of the Nanalan movement and the establishment of a similar mechanism within the COP framework, emphasizing collaboration with the United Arab Emirates and Brazil in advancing COP agendas despite the differing regional locations. The president of Azerbaijan expressed interest in developing relations with the Commonwealth. Patricia Scotland pointed out that 33 member states of the Commonwealth are small island states which are most vulnerable to the negative impacts of climate change, with some even facing existential threats due to climate change. The head of state issued special attention to the challenges faced by small island states and least developed countries during Azerbaijan's COP29 presidency, adding Azerbaijan is ready to contribute to addressing their problems. Discussion were also concerned with joint cooperation projects between Azerbaijan and the Commonwealth and the conduct of dedicated sessions for small island states within the COP29 framework. The head of state received Tofiga Falani, Governor General of Tuvalu, Savaleni COC of Ki Vahafalano, Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Tonga, and Frederick Odle Mitchell, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Welcoming the guests, President Ilham Aliyev said he was glad to see the guests were discussing important issues related to climate. The head of state invited them to the COP29 conference and expressed hope that they will be present at the opening of the conference. Governor General of Tuvalu, Tofiga Falani, outlined number one top priorities for COP29, the launch of the Loss and Damages Fund, finalizing the definition of a new collective quantitative target for climate finance, and taking action to prevent climate change and adopting a fair and equitable transition to clean energy. 
Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Tonga, Siayosi Ofaki Vafafolaho Sovaleni, said that COP29 should be a turning point in addressing important issues, not only globally but specifically for small island nations, and added that climate change knows no borders. It doesn't matter for it if it's a small or a big country. He said the involvement of small island countries to join the discussion of what can be done at COP in Azerbaijan not only pleasantly surprised them, but they also highly appreciated this step. We would like to propose the topic of coastal protection for discussion during a government's presidency of COP29. I don't want to talk about the Bahamas, but we and Tuvalu anyway are 99% surrounded by the ocean. Our area is quite small. We sometimes call ourselves a great ocean nation, but the reality is we don't have the resources on land and we have to do what we can to protect the little area we have, said Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Tonga. Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, Frederick Audley Mitchell, particularly mentioned the issue of attracting financial resources to the Loss and Damage Fund. He underlined that five years ago, just one hurricane cost the Bahamas 30% of its GDP, and they were still dealing with the aftermath. Because of the funding from the Loss and Damage Fund, huge breakwaters were under construction, and the biggest challenge here for the Bahamas, the Caribbean in general, was that they were considered high-income countries. Many people do not take into account that natural disasters occur, and serious damage is done to the country, said Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, Frederick Odle Mitchell. President Ilham Aliyev said that during COP29, Azerbaijan will look at these issues from a practical point of view. We know that there have been a lot of discussions with respect that there is a lot of talk, but not many results. Our position was always very practical and pragmatic. We want to deliver results. The most important topic which will be discussed during the conference is finance. So we are actively working on allocation of financing in order to deal with this issue. But also we understand that for some countries, climate change is a problem. But for some countries, it's a matter of their existence. We clearly understand it. Helping small island states for us is something which we consider our moral duty. So we can promise you that the issue of small island states and their support, their protection, will be in the center of discussions. We, as the president of COP29, will bring it to the spotlight, said the head of state. President Ilham Aliyev received OSC chair in office, Minister for Foreign and European Affairs and Trade of Malta, in work, and his accompanying delegation. OSCE Chair in Office in Bork recalled the meeting and discussions held on the sidelines of this year's Munich Security Conference with the President of Azerbaijan, saying that his visit has a regional character. He mentioned that Malta supports the normalization of relations between Azerbaijan and Armenia, as well as the negotiation process on a peace treaty. President Ilham Aliyev emphasized that it was Azerbaijan that initiated the peace process between Azerbaijan and Armenia and its fundamental principles forming the basis of this process, and that the text of the peace agreement was prepared by Azerbaijan and presented for discussion. The Azerbaijani president noted that the negotiation process is currently underway between Azerbaijan and Armenia to advance the peace agenda. The other side noted that although the consequences of Armenia's military aggression against Azerbaijan and the occupation of its lands has been on the agenda of the OSC since its inception, neither this organization nor the OSC Minsk Group co-chairmanship mechanism had done anything to eliminate the consequences of the conflict, liberate Azerbaijani territories from occupation, and ensure the return of internally displaced persons. During this year, the negotiation process conducted by the co-chairs of the OSC Minsk Group contributed to perpetuating the occupation of Azerbaijani territories. President Ilham Aliyev emphasized that Azerbaijan, through its own determination and strength, has brought an end to the occupation, ensuring territorial integrity and sovereignty in accordance with international law and the UN Charter. Noting that the Armenia-Azerbaijan conflict is now a thing of the past, the head of state proposed the dissolution of the OSC Minsk Group and all associated institutions. The Azerbaijani leader pointed out that Azerbaijan had raised this issue and there appears to be no reason for Armenia to oppose it. During the meeting, discussions revolved around transportation connectivity matters within the OSC framework. Ian Borg noted that his country backs the concept of small island developing states and advocates for the enhancement of their relations with the European Union. Considering Azerbaijan's COP29 presidency, he expressed readiness for cooperation with Azerbaijan in this regard as well. President Ilham Aliyev stressed that the concerns of small island developing states will be one of priorities of the Azerbaijan's presidency of COP29, highlighting the visit of Patricia Scotland, Secretary General of the Commonwealth, to Azerbaijan. The head of state touched upon the cooperation between the small island developing states affiliated with this organization and similar other countries, addressing existential challenges faced by them within the COP framework and conducting various events. President Ilham Aliyev underlined that Azerbaijan is interested in cooperation with Malta in this regard. 
President Ilham Aliyev received a delegation led by Shen Yuei, Vice Chairperson of the National Committee of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, Chairperson of Good Neighbor Liners Friendship and Cooperation Commission of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Praising the successful development of bilateral relations between Azerbaijan and China, the head of state noted that these ties are based on principles of friendship, mutual understanding and support. Fondly recalling his meetings with Xi Jinping, President of the People's Republic of China, President Ilham Aliyev described these meetings as demonstration of friendly relations and expressed eagerness for their next meeting. The other state mentioned real opportunities to elevate bilateral relations to a higher level and noted that the two countries are already cooperating very closely across various areas. The president highlighted the recent increase in reciprocal official visits between Azerbaijan and China at different levels, which serves to strengthen bilateral bonds. Praising growth in the economic, trade and transportation sectors, President Ilham Aliyev expressed satisfaction with the increased mutual trade between the peoples. The head of state expressed confidence that Shen Yuei's visit to Azerbaijan would be productive, contribute to strengthening friendly relations, and provide a good opportunity to discuss prospects for cooperation. Expressing gratitude for the reception and kind words, Shen Yuei said, You have been a friend of Xi Jinping, President of the People's Republic of China, and the Chinese people for many years. First of all, I would like to convey the greetings and best wishes of the President of the People's Republic of China to you. In recent years, under your resolute and wise leadership, the Azerbaijani people have demonstrated unity and progressed along the path of development. Your country has witnessed sustainable stability and rapid economic development, and Azerbaijan's strengths has significantly increased. Shen Yuei emphasized that China supports the Azerbaijani people's choice regarding their development paths and Azerbaijan's active international interaction on South-South cooperation to tackle global climate change. She noted that Azerbaijan's influence in the world is constantly increasing, which makes China happy as the country's close friend and reliable partner. Touching on the presidential election held in Azerbaijan, Shen Yuei emphasized the head of state's resounding victory in this election. She extended her congratulations, described it as a testament to strong support for President Ilham Aliyev's policy by the Azerbaijani people. Shen Yuei wished the Azerbaijani people, whom the Chinese people consider close, new successes on the development path. Noting that Xi Jinping and the President of Azerbaijan have outlined plans for future development of bilateral relations between the two countries, she expressed confidence that with the strategic leadership of the two heads of state, China-Azerbaijan relations will enter a new stage and contribute to the prosperity of both countries' peoples. The head of state expressed gratitude for the greetings, congratulations and kind words from the President of the People's Republic of China and asked Shen Yuei to communicate his greetings to President Xi Jinping as well as President Ilham Aliyev emphasized Azerbaijan's consistent support for China's territorial integrity and its One China policy. A statement from the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Azerbaijan reiterated this support and condemned the elections held in Taiwan. The head of state also highlighted the prevalence of trends supporting separatism and policies based on double standards globally. Shen Yuei emphasized that the People's Republic of China has always supported Azerbaijan's territorial integrity, sovereignty and independence. She expressed gratitude to Azerbaijan for its support of the One China policy. President Ilham Aliyev stressed that Azerbaijan's policies are driven by its national interests. He noted that Azerbaijan as a friend and partner is happy with China's, in particular Chinese economy's achievements under the leadership of Xi Jinping. The other state emphasized China's significance in the global economy and its role in global economic development. Shen Yuei congratulated Azerbaijan on hosting COP29 and touched on the cooperation issues within this framework. The other state noted that Azerbaijan is part of the Global South and defends the interests of these countries within the non-aligned movement framework. Furthermore, President Ilham Aliyev underlined that Azerbaijan would spare no effort to represent the interests of Global South countries within the COP29 framework. The head of state pointed out that Azerbaijan is ready to cooperate with the People's Republic of China within the COP29 framework, and Azerbaijan's COP29 delegation visited China for discussions. During the meeting, satisfaction was expressed with the development of relations between the ruling parties, the new Azerbaijan party and the Communist Party of China. Members of the Chinese delegation highlighted the projects implemented by the Haider Ali Foundation in various countries around the world and underlined that the cooperation with Chinese respective organizations within people-to-people -people diplomacy contributes to the development of relations between the two countries. President Ilham Aliyev touched upon cooperation between the ruling parties, highlighting the importance of cultural humanitarian events facilitated by the Hidar Aliyev Foundation and China's various organizations on the basis of the people-to-people -people diplomacy. During the discussion, the sides noted Chinese companies' great interest in cooperation with Azerbaijan in the renewable energy sector. Discussions also revolved around production of electric buses, electric cars and 
renewable energy facilities and the Chinese company's investments in the sector. The sites hailed the development of cooperation between Azerbaijan and China across various sectors, including political, economic, investment, transportation, green energy and people-to-people -people diplomacy, which propelled China-Azerbaijan relations to qualitatively new level. Discussions included mutual support, the One Belt, One Road initiative, the development of the Middle Corridor and other mutually beneficial issues. An official welcome ceremony was held for Alexander Lukashenko, President of the Republic of Belarus, who arrived in the Republic of Azerbaijan for a state visit. Ilham Aliyev, President of Azerbaijan, welcomed Alexander Lukashenko, President of Belarus. The Chief of the Guard of Honor reported to the Belarusian President. Zana Belarus Respublikası'nın Prezidenti, sizin Azerbaijan Respublikası'na gelmeniz şerefine fəxri qaralı düzlü. The national anthem of the Republic of Belarus and the Republic of Azerbaijan were played. The delegation of Azerbaijan was introduced to the President of Belarus, while the delegation of Belarus was introduced to the President of Azerbaijan. The Guard of Honor marched in front of Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev and Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko to the accompaniment of a military march. The president posed for official photos.
President Ilham Aliyev held a one-on-one -on -one meeting with President of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko. Then the heads of two states held a meeting in an expanded format. President Ilham Aliyev held a one-on-one -on -one meeting with President of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko. Then a meeting in an expanded format took place. Addressing the meeting, President Ilham Aliyev said that a detailed conversation on many issues of the bilateral agenda, as well as regional and international matters, was held. The head of our state once again reaffirmed the strategic nature of bilateral relations, saying their relations are time-tested and no one would doubt that Belarus and Azerbaijan are two reliable friends. There are a lot of topics that need to be addressed. Looking at the prospects of our interaction, we are observing huge potential and increasing trade turnover and continued expansion of industrial cooperation and collaboration in agriculture, said President Ilham Aliyev, and expressed satisfaction with the fact that Belarusian companies and enterprises will participate in the restoration of liberated territories. Members of our delegations have also held discussions on this topic. The composition of delegations also speaks volumes. It says a lot about the issues that are on the agenda. But of course, they are not limited to the issues members of the delegation are responsible for. So our cooperation is quite multidimensional, with a good history and a good future," underscored President Hamaliev. President Alexander Lukashenko thanked the head of our state for the warm welcome and outlined the bilateral relations as the kindest, the closest relations. The president of Belarus recalled the conversation held before the war, before the liberation of our territories, and recalled the sure victory in this war and said that it's important to hold on that victory. But thirdly, it was also pointed out that the most difficult time would begin after the war, when it would be necessary to revive the liberty of but thirdly, it was also pointed out that the most difficult time would begin after a war, when it would be necessary to revive the liberated lands. And that hard time has come. When you have to revive these lands, you have to bring people back to their homes. Some have already been born in the city. You have won and you have held on this victory. It takes time, it is a lot of effort. It is difficult to do it all in five, perhaps even in ten years, said President Lukashenko and expressed his commitment to provide assistance and participate in this process. You have sufficient personnel, but as a friend, we can participate in this process with equipment, agrotowns and workplaces. People can be relocated and returned, but for this, apartments and workplaces are needed. We have certain technologies, and your specialists and ministers are well acquainted with these technologies. If the proposed solution is successful, our equipment will remain operational here, concluded President Alexander Lukashenko. A ceremony of signing documents was held with participation of President of Azerbaijan, Ilham Aliyev, and President of the Republic of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko. Chairman of the State Customs Committee of the Republic of Azerbaijan, Shahim Bagirov, and Chairman of the State Customs Committee of the Republic of Belarus, Vladimir Arlovsky, signed a protocol between the Government of the Republic of Azerbaijan and the Government of the Republic of Belarus on the mutual use of electronic system for certification of the origins of goods. Minister of Agriculture of the Republic of Azerbaijan, Majnun Mamadov, and Minister of Agriculture and Food of the Republic of Belarus, Sergei Bartosz, signed a protocol on additions and amendments to the agreement dated 2nd May 2007 on cooperation between the Government of the Republic of Azerbaijan and the Government of the Republic of Belarus in the field of plant quarantine and protection, and the protocol on additions and amendments to the agreement dated 2nd May 2007 on cooperation between the Government of the Republic of Azerbaijan and the Government of the Republic of Belarus in the field of veterinary medicine. Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Azerbaijan, Yehon Bayramov, and Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Belarus, Sergei Alenik, signed the action plan on the development of tourism cooperation between the State Tourism Agency of the Republic of Azerbaijan and the Minister of Sports and Tourism of the Republic of Belarus for 2024-2025. Minister of Economy of the Republic of Azerbaijan, Mikhail Jabarov, and Minister of Anti-Monopoly Regulation and Trade of the Republic of Belarus, Alexei Bogdanov, signed a Memorandum on Mutual Understanding and Cooperation between the Minister of Economy of the Republic of Azerbaijan and the Ministry of Anti-Monopoly Regulation and Trade of the Republic of Belarus in the fields of competition policy, public procurement, protection of consumer rights and advertising activities. Minister of Economy of the Republic of Azerbaijan, Mikhail Jabarov, and Director of the State Institutional National Agency for Investment and Privatization of the Republic of Belarus, Dmitry Krasovsky, signed a Memorandum of Understanding between the Small and Medium Business Development Agency of the Republic of Azerbaijan and the State Institution National Agency for Investment and Privatization of the Ministry of Economy of the Republic of Belarus. Head of Baku City Executive Authority, Eldar Azizov, and Chairman of the Minsk City Executive Committee, Vladimir Kukharov, signed a memorandum on the establishment of a sister city relationship between the city of Baku, Republic of Azerbaijan, and the city of Minsk, Republic of Belarus. Head of Ganja City Executive Authority, Niazi Bayramov, and Chairman of Gomel City Executive Committee, Vladimir Privalov, signed a memorandum of understanding on the establishment of a sister city relationship between the city of Ganja, Republic of Azerbaijan, and the city of Gomel, Republic of Belarus.
head of the Kabbalah District Executive Authority Sabuhi Abdullah and chairman of the Grodno City Executive Committee Andrei Valevich Khmel signed a memorandum of understanding on the establishment of a sister city relationship between the city of Kabbalah, Republic of Azerbaijan, and the city of Grodno, Republic of Belarus. President Ilham Aliyev and President of Belarus Alexander Lukashenko then made press statements. President Ilham Aliyev and President of Belarus Alexander Lukashenko viewed the 17th Azerbaijan International Agriculture Exhibition, Caspian Agro, and the 29th Azerbaijan International Food Industry Exhibition, Interfood Azerbaijan, at the Baku Expo Center on May 16th. On May 16th, an official reception was hosted on behalf of President Ilham Aliyev in honor of the President of the Republic of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, in Gulistan Palace. On May 17, President of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, visited Fizuli and Shusha. A guard of honor was lined up for the president of Belarus at Fizoli International Airport. <laughs> president of the Republic of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, was a real combined president of the Republic of Azerbaijan, Ivan Aliyev. The president of Belarus was in front of Pizoli, Zangilan and Lachun International Airports. State visited the devastated areas of the city of Fizoli and examined the city's master plan. <music> President Alexander Lukashenko was in front of boundary devastations and acts of vandalism committed by Armenia in the territory of Fizoli district during the 30 years of occupation.
Afterwards, President Ilham Aliyev and President of Belarus Alexander Lukashenko paid a visit to the city of Shusha. The heads of state told the first residential complex in Shusha viewed a bus jointly manufactured by Azerbaijan and Belarus, as well as tractors presented by the President of Belarus. They also viewed the monuments to the prominent personalities of Azerbaijan, such as Natavan Bulbul and Uzir Hajibeli, which were shot by Armenians in Shusha during the occupation. Then the presidents familiarized themselves with the Heydar Aliyev and Garabakh exhibition at the Creativity Center restored by the Heydar Aliyev Foundation in Shusha, visited the Bulbul House Museum in Shusha and Jeter Duzur Plain. On May 18th, the head of state attended a groundbreaking ceremony for the villages of Büyük Marjanlı, Çarxolu, Sarıcalı and Maşanlı in Jabrail district. President Ilham Aliyev and First Lady Mehriban Aliyev attended the inauguration of the Agali Hotel in the village of Agali of Zangilan district. The head of state laid the foundation stone for Minjivan settlement in Zangilan district. He also inaugurated Zangilan and Shaifli hydroelectric power plants operated by Azar Energy Open Joint Stock Company. President Ilham Aliyev and First Lady Mehriban Aliyev attended the opening of the Zangilan Mosque. The head of state laid a foundation stone for the internal road and communication network of the city of Zangilan. That was all for the week. Thank you for watching us and stay tuned not to miss the next edition of our program.